So why am I in the Honda talking about efficiency in the Model 3? Keep watching and find out. All right, good morning everyone. Today's topic is an interesting one. We're discussing efficiency of the Model 3 using the HVAC system. And the reason that I'm starting out today's discussion driving the Honda is because I wanted to explain to you guys the differences between the way a gasoline car uh, heats the cabin and the way an EV heats the cabin. Now in this car, this is your typical gasoline powered car, waste engine heat is transferred by the, uh, the antifreeze through the heater core in the dash and that waste heat is recycled and used to heat the cabin very efficient way to do things. If you're already generating heat, there's no reason to artificially generate heat to heat the cabin. So, now with an EV, EVs generally don't uh, produce enough of their own waste heat to heat the cabin. Now, there are some cars that use heat pumps and will will use a little bit, there, there is a little bit of, of warmth generated by the, uh, by the electric motor that could be used to warm the cabin, but not a whole lot. And so generally supplemental heat is required and that's either done through traditionally would be a heating element or um, I believe in the Model 3's uh, case Tesla has found a way to make the motor uh, generate heat and use the motor cooling fluid to warm the cabin but in any event either way in an EV you have to you have to consume energy that you would otherwise not need to consume to warm up the cabin, whereas in a gas car, again, you're using waste heat to heat the cabin. With that explanation out of the way, let's switch over to the Model 3. Wow, feels good to be back in the Model 3. So let's go ahead and get to the testing. I'm gonna do some testing with the heat on, with the heat off, uh, with the car preheated or not preheated and I'll be giving you the results today. All right, so you can see I've got my tripod rig uh, set up from the ceiling uh, aiming at my uh, aiming at the screen here. So let's see if I can get a better image of that. And um, so I'll be recording the um, all of the data off of the screen today. And um, so let's get into it. All right, so you can see I reset my miles and my watt hours per mile, and I'm at a, um, a school parking lot, a, a real good area to, uh, to start this test. The road that I'll be driving on is um, very minimal traffic. Of course, it's rush hour this morning, but typically minimal traffic, no stop signs or stop lights. It's a good, a good uh, test area. And um, what I'll do is I will turn the heat on as soon as I um, turn out of the parking lot here. And um, right now it's 45 degrees outside. I have not preheated the cabin and I reset my uh, mileage and watt hours per mile for the day. So here we go, I'm pulling out. So I'm gonna turn the heat on to 72. All right. And we'll see what our efficiency is. Now bear in mind, uh, I have not, like I said before, I've not preheated the car, and uh, this initial test is to get us a baseline of the car is cold on the interior. Now it's only 45 degrees outside, so it's not it's not super cold yet. Uh, this this test will be exaggerated when it gets much colder in the in the deep winter, but um, for now this is a good test to give you guys an idea of how much energy the car consumes. When, um, when using the uh, when using the HVAC system along with driving. Now, also, I drove the car two miles before this test without the heat on, just to sort of um, get a little bit of warmth in the pack, so that this wasn't a skewed test, starting with a cold battery pack. But rather, this test is just for testing driving with the HVAC system on. I've got the cruise control set at the speed limit of 50 and I've got the heat set for 72. So um, let's see, we'll turn the seat heat on at two bars. So this is what you could expect getting into the car on a winter morning. All 
All right, so you'll see I ended that six and a half mile drive at uh, just under 300 watt hours per mile. That was with the heat turned on, just beginning to preheat the cabin. So now what I'm gonna do is reset. I'm gonna leave the heat on where it was. And um, now the cabin is essentially preheated. So this particular part of the journey, I'll drive the exact same way I did before and the same speed, the same route. But um, again, now the heat is, um, the cabin has been preheated. So this journey should be lower watt hours per mile. You'll see it always starts out super high when you reset it and then accelerate because acceleration draws a lot of current. So, but it should settle into far lower than that 300 watt hours per mile by the time we return. So let's see how it goes. That was an interesting result. That was essentially the exact same watt hours per mile with the heat continuing to run as it was preheating the cabin. So we'll go ahead and reset it and we'll turn off the heat, turn off the heated seat and get some, uh, some data just driving the car with no HVAC system at all in exactly the same route. All right, well, that was a massive difference. You can see we're at 217 watt hours per mile. But I have a thought. Uh, I just realized that I was, um, the first leg of this test uh, was supposed to be seeing how much energy was used while driving and initially using the heat in the car to preheat the cabin while you drove. And, um, so, but I realized that it's in the mid 40s outside. I drove the car to warm up the battery and just my presence of sitting in the car and I had the seat heat on warmed up the cabin enough that that test was really null and void. You'll notice the, the first two tests were very, uh, very much identical in watt hours per mile with the heat on both preheating the cabin and then once the cabin was heated. So 217 watt hours per mile using no cabin heat at all. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same six and a half mile drive. But what I'm going to do is to simulate preheating the cabin, I've opened the windows to cool off the car and I'm going to set the heat way up at 80 degrees and set the fan on higher and um, crack a back window so that the, the heat is forced to fight the whole time. That should be a better representation of what it would be like if it were, say, 10 degrees Fahrenheit rather than the 45 that it is now. So I'll go ahead and start the test once again here. All right, so I'm resetting, and as soon as I start driving, yeah, there we go. I'm going to crank the heat all the way up on high. Turn the fan up a bit, and we'll let it crank and see what we get out of it this time. All right, well, there you go. The end of the same uh, six and a half mile trip. 344 watt hours per mile that's with the heat cranking endlessly the whole way which i believe is a better representation of what it's like to leave in the morning without preconditioning the cabin whatsoever and just driving and turning on the heat so quite a big difference between initially driving with the car cold and cranking the heat the entire way versus uh, preheating the cabin which test number two was essentially with the cabin preheated and uh, leaving the heat on at 72 degrees the whole way and not running the heat at all. One last thing that I want to make clear about this test is it would be exaggerated even further if I were in stop and go traffic. The reason for that is that I in stop and go traffic you're covering fewer miles for every BTU of heat that the heat system is putting off. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and um, by all means, give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and um, if you're planning on buying a new Tesla and you'd like help on supercharging cost, go ahead and click the link in the description below and use my referral code. Every referral that I get helps the channel and helps the person purchasing the car. So anyway, thanks, guys. Take it easy.